Do you like to make things? Do you like free things? Well, I got a lot of suggestions for you in this video. Hello lovelies, welcome to Amy of Melbourne. My name's Amy, obviously. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to start sewing, crafting and making without spending a fortune. Everyone knows that in the current economic climate, it's really important to not spend extra money if you don't have to. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to avoid pitfalls in spending money, as well as how to do a lot of this stuff for free. The first and most important recommendation that I have to do any kind of crafting as frugally as possible, visit your local library. And at the library. There's a couple of reasons to visit. For example, at my local library, you can borrow sewing kits, pool kits, screen printing kit, looms, and even sewing machines and overlockers. They also have a brilliant maker space that you can hire. A lot of other libraries I know of have these as well. Another reason to go to your library is for books. Lots and lots and lots of pattern and instruction books are available at your library without you having to spend any money at all. And then you can just take them back. I actually borrow about 30 books a month. I guess I'm a bit too much. The reason is because I like to be able to look through them and read them before I buy them. I like to see if they are going to suit me and what I want to make and I enjoy. And I do actually usually buy the ones that I really, really love. But a lot of them, I get them home and I flick through them and then they're not really what I'm looking for. So rather than buying it and then being like, well, now I'm stuck with it. I just borrow it from the library first. Particularly as a beginner, if you're unsure of how much you're gonna commit to this new hobby, this is a really great way for anyone to be able to access the knowledge before you actually put money into it. Speaking of libraries, you can also go and find community groups and lessons for a lot of different kinds of crafts, making and sewing. If you check out your library's bulletin boards, Libraries are part of the community and a lot of them, mine in particular, definitely puts on events and creates spaces for people to be able to learn communally. So it's another really great way of not only learning something new, but connecting with other like-minded people. Another free service that we have here in Melbourne are maker spaces. These are spaces that have lots of equipment available for all different kinds of crafts and making. There aren't a lot of them, they are getting more common, but I love the ones that we have. I recently visited this one, which is near Queen Vic Market in Melbourne CBD, and I thought that it was incredible. I still need to do my induction so that I can actually go and use some of the equipment myself, which I desperately want to do. These are an amazing resource where people of any background, of any economic status can actually have access to more expensive equipment. It's also a place where you can learn how to use even the most basic equipment. For example, badge making or just basic sewing skills. The next one is to look for guilds. Guilds are like associations or groups and they tend to be relatively old in terms of their foundations. And they have a lot of different types of people from different experience levels and backgrounds who come together to enjoy a particular kind of craft or hobby. Particularly if you're looking at smaller, more rural areas, they often have open days or beginner days like I've recently done at the Shepparton Spinners and Weavers Guild. And you can go there for a fairly low cost, sometimes even no cost, and the guild members will teach you what you need to know to begin that particular craft or skill. This is also how I learned how to do bob and lace making. They have guilds for embroidery, patchwork, sewing, woodworking, everything you could ever imagine. It usually has a guild if it's a hand, handy type thing. A lot of people feel a little put off by them because they feel like they're already people who know each other or it feels like starting at a new school and there's all these people you don't know and a lot of them may be older than you. But generally speaking, they're people who are really quite passionate about making things and doing certain types of skills. And so long as you're there with an open mind to learn that, then they're very welcoming and very lovely people. If you are just beginning your journey into this, I'm going to oddly recommend that if you can afford it, you should get a quality beginner kit. Don't go on to Amazon and eBay and buy a big bulk kit of equipment. That's not what I mean. I mean, go to Etsy, go to some reputable places, not necessarily Kmart, not even necessarily Spotlight, but if you go to small independent retailers or if you look through a lot of indie designers, you can see that they actually have great starter kits that have everything that you need and no more 
that you can pay a little bit more for, but they're really going to help you through that learning process. I, I love buying kits. <laughs> some of my favorite things are kits. And I have gotten some terrible ones in the past somewhere. I have literally had to throw them away because the quality of them is so bad and the instructions are so poor <laughs> that there's, there's nothing, there's nothing in it for me. At the most I could keep like an embroidery hoop out of an embroidery set. And that's happened a couple of times. And yet there are other ones that I have that are so beautiful and so well-made uh, that they inspired me to make some myself. And I do make and sell kits as well, but so do a lot of people. I love the kits from like Amy Calissa it makes really beautiful ones. I know a lot of the Tula Pink ones are really lovely. Or if you go to quilt shops, bag making shops, those sort of specialty shops, most of them will have starter kits that they, they want you to buy them because they're good. Other than spending money on kits that are poor quality and frustrating and end with either you giving up or buying even more stuff or buying these massive kits of all this equipment that you don't even know how to use, instead go to a quality independent retailer or an indie designer and buy one of their kits that they've put their heart and soul into and have made sure a really good quality. If you're looking for materials to get started with, don't start by going on to Amazon, buying whatever the cheapest thing is that you can get your hands on. There are definitely cheap things that you can use to start with, but going there is probably gonna lead to you having really subpar tools and materials, and it's gonna make it the learning experience really frustrating. Instead, I'm gonna recommend that you go to Facebook Marketplace or other types of buy, swap and sell type things like Gumtree, those sort of spaces. Craigslist, I think is another one in other countries. <laughs> we mostly use Facebook Marketplace. And if you go onto there and have a scroll through and you can set your parameters so it's zero or a low amount, you can find scrap fabric that people are giving away for other people to learn with. You can find basic materials, basic sewing machines even. I will say if you get a sewing machine for free, there's a possibility that it doesn't work, but it's another option. Speaking of getting sewing machines secondhand, if you do come across a sewing machine that's secondhand, either passed onto you from a friend or a family member, or if you get it from Facebook, you can go to a repair cafe. They may be called something different where you live, but in Australia, they're usually called repair cafes and they're run either by the local council municipality or by local libraries. And they're a place where you can go on a specific day and there's lots of different kinds of makers and knowledgeable handy people and you can bring those sorts of things that need to be repaired or just looked at to make sure that they're safe and there are people there who can help you out with that. This can also be a really great way of finding people who know how to use a sewing machine if you are unsure and don't have uh, the money to be able to get someone to help show you and if you don't have anyone in your own life or a library that has sewing lessons. Another great place to get materials and equipment for free or at least very very affordably is to go into D-stash groups. D-stash groups are usually organized on something like Facebook, uh, sometimes through Reddit even, and they are places where people are getting rid of or want to swap their materials, their tools that they're no longer using. I'm part of one that's specific for ADHD, so we're all like, yeah, we've bought a lot of equipment for this random hobby that we've just not into as of three seconds ago. So that's really helpful for me and those like me who are compulsively collecting new hobbies. If you're looking for good quality tools, things like knitting needles, crochet hooks, thimbles, small tools, hand tools, then going to an op shop is a really, really great option. Older estates. Asher, Grandpa, can I have a Sammy now? These are usually from people who are downsizing or they've bought the equipment with good intentions and then not really use them. So they tend to be either good nick or good quality. If you're going to try upcycling to save money, it's really important to think about how difficult that fabric is gonna to be to work with and what level you're at in your sewing journey. I'm not saying don't do it, I'm saying do it. Absolutely, it's lots of fun, but you really need to make sure that you're not over frustrating yourself and then taking yourself out of the game before you get into it. Certain types of fibers, polyester fibers, they fray a lot and they can be really difficult to work with if you don't know what you're doing. Have a look up some free YouTube videos where people go through different types of fabrics and how they can be used and what to look out for in terms of pitfalls when using them. A really good example for me is when I first got into sewing, getting lots of 
crepe and rayons and not realizing that crepe makes me sweat because it is polyester and it's wearing a plastic bag and rayon is super slippery and hard to sew. So I have, you know, half finished garments from my beginning of making clothes for myself. I never finish because I grabbed the wrong kinds of fabric. This is even more likely if you're going through thrift shopping because you're going to get things like tablecloths and try and turn it into clothes. Maybe that tablecloth is not going to sit the way you want it to. And you're already trying to work through so much new knowledge that that extra step might for some people be just a little step too far in terms of difficulty. If you're going to go to a fabric store and purchase fabric to practice with, a really great place to start is something like quilting cotton or poplin. These are fairly inexpensive fabrics. They can be incredibly expensive, but if you're going big box store, your basics, Quilting cotton and poplin are usually your simplest types of fabric. They're easy to work with. They're really good for making simple projects like tote bags, pillows and cushions and PJ pants. They're usually where most of us start with in terms of our sewing and there's a good reason for that. They are projects that are attainable and you can get through and do. If you just want to practice sewing some straight lines, or just putting fabric together, layers and working out how to use your sewing machine, I highly recommend grabbing yourself some plain calico that is undyed and unbleached and then getting some basic plain cotton thread. The reason for this is because those things are compostable. So as you're using this, it's not as much of a waste as if you got some perfectly good things from the op shop, let's say, that you've tried to then just sew through and cut out bits of. Those probably polyester things from the 90s are going to end up in a landfill. It's better that you instead buy new, but buy something that can then be composted. You can also grab any kind of linen, which is another great one. It's a little bit more expensive, but it is technically more eco-friendly to grow in the first place. So those are your options there. For me personally, when I first started sewing, using something like quilt cottons, calicos, things that are just plain cotton, plain weave, and just making a few basic cushion covers or even things that I didn't end up using for much, like little pouches and totes. They're a really great way of just learning how to use the pressure of your foot, how to keep things straight, how to troubleshoot if your bobbin thread gets messed up, things like that are really uh, they, they're very tricky when you're first starting out. When you get further along in your journey of things like sewing, they're a lot less tricky. So then you can, you know, afford to, to move up in terms of the fabric that you're using. If you are looking for a cheap way of getting sewing patterns, I'm not going to recommend that you go to Big Box. In fact, I would never recommend that you buy a Big Four pattern pretty much ever. Instead, I'm going to suggest you go to a video like this one that I have linked here, where I go through free downloadable patterns. A lot of these are from amazing, incredible designers. They just happen to have a free pattern that they give away. I myself have quite a few free patterns on my website that you can start with and download. And same thing with crochet and with knitting and with polymer clay <laughs> and with any of these things. Most designers and suppliers have free patterns that they give away for all of these things. So it's a really great and useful tool to go to them and find something to start with. It may not be your favorite ultimate amazing project, but certainly when you're first beginning and learning or if you are strapped for cash, these are a great resource so that you can still do the thing that you love without having to spend lots of money on brand new patterns. Though we do love doing that. Another way of doing this, which requires a little bit more legwork, is if you go to recycling centers, we call it the dump. I don't know what other places call it, it's just the dump. To the dump! Yeah. If you go to the dump, then often they will have a shop at the start of the dump where they pick through good things of value that have been thrown away as trash and you can collect them instead and use them. Particularly if you require resources that are a little bit less perishable. If you're into textiles, not quite as much though, you know, knitting needles get put in the bin too. But if you are someone who does something like woodworking, metal crafting, pyrography, things like that, then you can go to those places and you're probably gonna find some good stuff. Another thing that you can consider is using natural resources around you. Depending on where you live, there are ways that you can use clay that you actually have in your own dirt in your backyard to sculpt with. You can use your plants around you and in your local area to make dyes and other things. You may be even in an area where you could make your own fabric out of plants near you. In a lot of Europe and North America, there are plants which can just be turned into fiber. Flax or linen is actually a native grass for a lot of Europe. Nettles, 
they actually have a fiber through the, the main stem that you can turn into plant fibers. In Australia, we have the pen pandemus, uh, which yes, but also painful and requires a bit more knowledge than just like grab it and ret it. Um, most of these do require quite a process, but you know, if, if you're looking for something to do, which is kind of what we're here for, that, that could be an option. The last one, which is obvious for some, but not for others, is to ask around and see if people have stuff that you can use or try or borrow. I know that I've got friends who have borrowed and then used and then kept things of mine. I've had friends who've come over for craft night and I've been working on something and they've wanted to work on something too. So I've given them some wool and some needles and off they go. And that's, that's cool. I know of lots of people who've been able to start sewing because they have been handed down a sewing machine from someone who bought it with good intentions or just because they thought that was a thing that you needed when you had your own home, when you become an adult and it's not. There are lots of different ways that you can come about having the equipment that you need. Certain hobbies are more expensive to get started with than others. Crochet and knitting is pretty simple. You just need a ball of wool and your needles or your hook. It's often really easy to get those things for free. Whereas sewing, if you want to do sewing on a sewing machine, that becomes a little bit more expensive. If you are starting sewing, hand sew. You can make clothes hand sewing them. You just need to know a couple of basic stitches and then you can make your own clothes. You don't need to have a full sewing machine. People of the past for thousands of years hand sewed their own clothes. Beautiful, amazing, incredible things like Elizabethan gowns were hand sewn every single bit of them. It's actually portable, which is pretty exciting if you're someone who likes to be on the road or maybe likes to do something during their lunch break from work. The, the level for entry is really different if all you're buying is needle and thread as opposed to buying an entire sewing machine. Even if you're getting a needle, thread and a thimble, that's a much lower entry point in terms of cost than buying an entire sewing machine and all of the equipment that goes with that. The most important thing when you're trying to save money with crafting and with making is to use what you have. So if you have a stash, turn around, get over to your stash and start using it. I think I'm suggesting that more to myself than anyone else. It can be really easy to get caught up by influencers and videos and other people that you know and what they're making and all the pretty things when you walk into a shop. And I'm guilty of that just as much, if not more so than other people, but use what you have first and try and economize that way. Enjoy the journey of whatever you're making because that's why we make. I hope that you found this video helpful, possibly useful. If you have any other frugal, cheap, or free tips for makers, sewers and crafters, please pop them down in the comments so that we can all share the knowledge. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe, like, all of those sorts of things, you know what you're doing, I'm not gonna need to tell you. And uh, yeah, see you later.